welcome. We bid you welcome, John Clauser, Johnny Metal, the Metal Dad, coming to you from my music corner of the world. And as always, for this year of the pre series, you've been seeing him with me every Wednesday now for like the last year or so. I am so thankful, John the Music Nut. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing well, my brother. How about you? It is. I it was we were talking off air this last week. Is if ever there was a week, that was one of them. If you understand what I'm saying, hit me up in the comments. Anyway, we are here today because we're just gonna take we're gonna take a little a little jaunt into the Priest Live album that came out in June of 1987. Let me get my notes up here. June 8th, 1987. Uh, recorded at the Omni in Atlanta and the Dallas, uh, uh, the Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas, uh, a year earlier, both dates in June of 1986. Uh, of course, you still have uh, Tom Allum at the producer helm. Didn't uh, this took a little while to uh, do some good certifications here? Uh, goes gold in Canada with only about 50,000 units for that. Goes gold in the United States for about 500000 Does not go platinum. The video for this uh, went gold. That was 50000 Chart action. Australia, so Peter and uh, Bicycle Legs and folks like that. This goes to 72. Austria, number 22. Canada with Mike Lodano and Roger Territory. Uh, 39. The Dutch chart, 68. Finish, number 7. Highest chart of all of them. German, number 23, Japanese, 48, Norwegian. Paul, how you doing, brother? As well as Ovi Rendum, uh, number 16. Swedish charts, number 19. Swiss charts, 18. UK, only 47. Hmm. And the UK, uh, the US uh, Billboard 200 actually goes to 38. Go figure that out. So, I, I, let's look at, let's, I want to take a, I want to take a, let's look at this. Let's look at this inside. Yeah. Now, is this as iconic as say, oh, I don't know, Kiss Alive 2, maybe? Or maybe Live After Death? Uh I don't know. What do you what do you think about this, John? Um I, I'm I'm not a fan of this. I nice shot of the bands. Yes. But I don't like all those hands up like that. It's not the greatest picture, but you do see Rob there with the long hair, which you wouldn't see too long, no. for a lot, long time, I should say. Right. And it's, but as 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 unflattering as this is, I think the album cover is even worse. Yes. This album cover is the change oh. of address of album covers. Oh boy, here we go again. It's bad. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. Not uh, sanitary. This is this seriously, this has gotta oh. be the worst album cover of a live album that I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. It's like it's like you look at you look at this inside and you it's like it's like the hands are photoshopped in there. Right. I mean, exactly. That, that's really about what that looks like. So it's it's just it just yeah, it really looks looks super, super cheesy uh to me. But you know, thank goodness. Hopefully, what's inside the what's inside the album is not quite so cheesy. Now, when yeah. I when I first got this, I actually had this on vinyl when I first got it. Um, I I don't know what I because I think I had like Turbo and Ram it down. Well, I would get Ram it down eventually. I think on cassette, but I think I had Turbo on cassette because I was able to listen to it on the headphones or whatever as I did my walking around. But then by 87, when this came out, well, you know, of course, I still had a, a record player and stuff like that. So and I preferred vinyl and I could that way I could make my mixtapes and whatever. So. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I actually had this baby on vinyl uh, way back in the day. So um, we're just going to kind of we're not going to kind of go track by track per se. We're just going to have a, just a free flowing discussion about this album. So. uh John, I'm going to let you kick it off with with any thoughts that you've got with this, and then we'll just kind of bounce off each other a little bit. So, all right, thanks, John. Yes, sir. 
Um, what's interesting with the original CD compared to cassette and compared to remastered versions of this later, they cut out a lot of the crowd, the crowd noise on this. Not well, not so much the crowd noise, but Rob Halford's interaction with the crowd mm has -hmm. been cut out a little bit on this. Like if you listen to this on Spotify, you're listening to something that is more closer to the concert experience than you were going to listen to on the original CD that came out in 87. Now I know the difference from the cassette because I had friends who had the cassette and then I'd be like, Oh, that wasn't that line that Rob said to the crowd wasn't on the CD. Um, so I noticed those little things. Mm -hmm. um, when this came out, it was really panned by the critics but consider some of the other live albums that were coming out right or like within a year or two of this. You had Scorpions Worldwide Live. That is a kick-ass live album. Yes, it is. And that featured their stuff from Love Drive through Love at First Sting, their commercial peak. Um, so that album was recorded really well. You had Live After Death in 85. And that is a seminal live album. That is uh... killer excellent live album yep. and then that that touches the whole career even though you know the first two albums with was paul diano but you still had bruce sing a lot of paul diano tracks on here mm. particularly on that that would be the second record i believe yeah yeah this especially the side this the the last side <laughs> excuse me you had wrath child and fan of the opera, of the opera and Running free, was, maybe. Running, oh, wait, that was, well, run, running free was the end, like kind of like the end of the show. Um, I think uh, if you got one of the bonus, like the the twelve inch singles, you had uh, Sanctuary and Murders in the Rue Morgue <clears throat> in there, so that was kind of cool to get those. Um, mm -hmm. So because they obviously they didn't they didn't have that on the album, but um, yeah. I I, rem I remember I think Sanctuary was what closes the show uh, okay. when I when I because I saw that tour, so I I remember. Okay. I remember Sanctuary closed the show. Running Free was like the, you know, Iron Maiden's the set closer. And then they come out, they do Running Free, and then they do Sanctuary. Running Free, of course, to the big. Well, we're going to split the audience down here in the middle and on the left. Yeah. And, yeah. So all that stuff, you know. So anyway, <clears throat> continue. So this, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all good. Um, so with this one, you're touching on the 1980s period. This is when they would really get their commercial breakthrough this was like i said this was panned i think you're panning it comparing it to unleashed in the east it's not unleashed in the east unleashed in the east is insane this is pretty good um mm -hmm. my issue with the album has always been the track listing i am now this came after five studio albums it would be british steel point entry screen for vengeance defenders of the faith and Turbo, respectively, just like Unleashed and East came after their first five studio albums. Only that was a single. Should have been a double. It would Later on, they'd add some tracks to it. But I think as when I listen to this, I'm thinking, okay, well, at this point, what you want to do is put out something that's your best of that period. And Turbo was my least favorite album from this period, and it was the Turbo Tour, I understand. You got to pull a lot of stuff from Turbo. Turbo's five tracks on here. And there's, I'm first thing I'm thinking is there's like two off here I would not put on, maybe even three. Um, the performances. Now, I've read, I think it might have been all music, might have said this, and they only gave it a two out of five. They said they sound tired. I don't think so. The energy's still here. Um, they, they, Rob actually sounds great on this album. This is when he first became sober. This is also when he had those long flowing locks and they were putting a little bit of pink into the black on their <laughs> um, stage gear, right? So they were getting a lot more women in the audience because Turbo is a more accessible album for radio. And they're talking a lot more about themes like teenager themes, mm -hmm. which we would have been at that time. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as for the performances, Out in the Cold, I think, is a killer opener. Um, but you really hear the crowd a lot louder on the version you hear now on Spotify than you hear on this original CD. Heading out to the highway, there's actually different solos on here from KK and Glenn than you have on the original. And they're very good. Mm -hmm. This is a, a very good performance here. Metal Gods, again, you got some nice solos. There's more life than the original. Breaking the Law, they go a little faster. And you hear that a lot on these, these tracks. Like Rock You're All Around the World is very fast. Um, Electric Eye is very fast. Parental Guidance, of course. Uh, not Parental Guidance, I'm sorry. Free Will Burning's on here. You got a lot of call and response during the cr with the crowd on here. They try to get a little sing-along on Rock You All Around the World, and they they extend private property a little bit. Uh, Love Bites. Rob's performance on he on this album is so great, mm -hmm. but this is the highlight. Mm -hmm. He sings his ass off on this one. Those screams at the end are mind blowing. <laughs> during that last during that last part of the song, it, especially that last one at the end, it's like wow, holy shit. Um, the performances again are really strong. You've got another thing in common. We got a. We got a nice little sing along here where you got the whole crowd going into it. Um, now they do, it's heavy on uh, Turbo. Four songs from Defenders. Okay, Defenders was a big album, but there's only two from Vengeance on here. And there's only one from Point of Entry. So if you're a newbie coming in, you're thinking, well, those albums must not be that good. Well, I've said my thing about Point of Entry. I think. A lot of it's very good and a lot of it isn't. Mm. And Screaming is one of my three favorite mm. albums. It was our gateway into the album, into yep. the band. Yep. Uh, so as a live document, I think this is a good primer, not a great one. Mm. Um, the performances are very strong. Like again, I'm not, it's not Unleashed. Unleashed in the East is a different animal. I mean, that is a scorcher of a live album. That's the, that might be exhibit A of the sync. The single live album, it should have been a double. Maybe you'd say Cheap Trick at Budokan. Right. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. else what else would be in there. I mean, yeah. there's a few others, like Pat Travers Live, Go For What You Know. But um, yeah, so I would give this a seven and a half out of 10. Okay. And uh, later on, uh, I'm going to talk about what I would put on here compared to what was actually released. Thanks. Right, right. Yeah, so... Um... You know, it's funny. Uh, something I read was that uh, uh, that this album was uh, that this album was more live than Unleashed in the East was. Right. <laughs> and of course, we all know the story behind that. You know, we all know we all know about Rob having to redo his vocals and you know and stuff like that. So, um, so you know, these things happen. Okay, you you have right. to. You want to fix you know, if you want to put it something like that out, you gotta you gotta tinker it up a little bit. When I was I when I would listen to this on the headphones, I thought, I wonder how much crowd noise got piped in. You know, we we always talk about in the wrestling, like in the WWE world. So here's our wrestling, here's our wrestling moment here. You know, there you when, go. when Dirty Dom, when Dirty Dom comes out. And they're like, yeah, everybody's just booing the heck out of him, you know? And they're like, you know, how much of that's real and how much that's really the arena? Well, I don't know from what people have been saying. No, that's the arena. I think even triple H has been said, man, I thought that was, I thought that was piped in man. that they, these people really hate you. <laughs> so, Great old school heel, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, and you know, and I know there was a lot of those kind of studio tricks where they, they knew how to, record certain cheers for certain, you know, they knew how to take a certain, you know, just a crowd cheering moment and then know where to spot it in, in certain songs. So when you hear like out in the cold, which I was as great a song as it is, I had, I always thought this is an interesting intro to a show intro, but I could see it because it sets a, it sets a mood. It sets an atmosphere. And I'm like, why are they cheering so loud at this one point in the song? And I'm like, then you watch the video and you're like, oh, that's when Rob walks on the stage. Right. He, he, you hear him singing, 
but then he then he's like walking up from behind the stage and now he's in and then the crowd goes nuts i'm like okay now it makes more sense so um let's see uh so i thought you know a good good opener of i think there's one thing that i'm going to mention a lot in this on this album i'm just going to kind of blanket it when you listen to some of these songs on the on the headphones i just feel like there's there's something missing in in the songs that you're not that you don't get from the studio yeah i know you can't re- reproduce everything perfectly ex- unless you have like three or six guitar players but sometimes there's a certain songs that when they do like um like out in the cold i think like there was something missing toward the end of the guitar solo and it's like there was like a, you just didn't have that rhythm punch Mm-hmm. that rhythm oomph you know between the drums okay. and bass and everything i don't know there you i i hear that a lot in in some of these songs um heading out to the highway you know um uh, i think again i think rob's got a lot of there's a little extra something in rob's vocals on this whole thing like they obviously add some i don't know if it was added in the show or if that's just how you know how his mic was set but you obviously hear a lot of reverb going on in his in his voice <clears throat> sounds great though don't get me wrong it sounds great um right. obviously you know you know you know where all the crowd noise needs to be um metal gods i actually kind of liked after listening to it again i'm like i like this a lot better than the than the studio version it, it does have some more life to it i i so i i did i did appreciate that breaking the law you're right seemed a little faster um love bites to me this is the song that was missing a lot of the oomph Okay. Um, to me, uh, again, and I really heard it in the, in the, in the, in the headphones. It's, it doesn't, it just seems like the, the drums don't sound as thunderous, you know, and, 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 you know, Ian and Dave's rhythm section is not as oomphy when they get to that solo section. There's just a lot of stuff that just drops out. And it's like, you just not, I don't, I just don't hear enough oomph to, to boost that up, you know? it still sounds good. And I, and I think they did the best they could with what they had, but you can definitely tell that there's a lot of extra guitars on that and a lot of extra oomph in the, in that rhythm section. Um, some heads are going to roll great little banter. Halford screams musically solid. No, no complaint there. Sentinel amazing live again. Rob's just going to the stratosphere. Um, Private property, another great chance, you know, good chance, chance for the crowd chant on the, on the album though, on this though, you get, you get two crowd chanters back and back to back. You go, you get, you get private property and then you get rock or rock you all around the world, you know, um, it's not original yet. Right. So, but, and we, we talked a little bit about this last week. If you get this, you get the, you get, you know, two discs of from the same tour. Uh, this was a month before these were recorded. So this is in Kansas City. So uh, how they split this up is um, they go from private property into desert plains. Okay. I can see, I can kind of see why they left de- desert plains off, off of this thing. Uh, it's way too fast way too fast it this it it loses that epic feel that adventurous feel that you got on on the on the original cd and i don't know just wait just too fast didn't come across as good so it's it splits the crowd chance up yeah you get dave with a little drum solo which is cool but it splits the crowd chance up a little bit which i thought was a nice touch um locked in happens after out in the cold not a bad not a bad version it's okay it's good um the rest of the rest of the first cd exactly like you see it on 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 here uh they go to the hellion and electric guy of course you gotta you gotta play that i still say it's to me it's a better crowd or show opener but you know here right. you're, about, you're about halfway through the set so i'm like okay now you get the chance to do you know a little bit of pyro with uh with the uh, you know with what you see with this 
this crazy mechanism thing that that hoists up Glenn and KK and, right. <laughs> and stuff like that. So uh pretty cool to see and pretty cool to see the thing uh 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 you know the video and of course you hear you you are hearing the the, the the fireworks and all the pyro going off so that's kind of a cool thing uh you're right electric eye did seem a little bit faster but it still sounded good right i think i think it still sounded really really good uh turbo lover um again i think it sounds great live it, you, you you have that that i think rob just sounds a little more snarly on that which uh, compared to the original which i thought was pretty cool yeah. um the only thing i the only thing was again in the chorus they're following Rob's vocal and it's like it again, that oomph of the music kind of there's something lost there. I don't know. It's the only, that's the only negative thing I had to say about that. Uh, free wheel burning. Th th this was my notes. Whoa, Dave, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing Iron Maiden suffers would suffer from with how will be thy name um, way too fast way too fast when when rob gets that that speedy thing i don't even think he's even saying the words i think at this point that he's just like it's just so fast mm -hmm. and but it's still i mean it sounds good i mean the whole song itself still sounds good it's just yeah slow down dave come on um parental guidance uh, I like the little guitar squeals that that one of the guys did in the when this the whole screaming part. You know, the the I was like, oh, I caught that little you know kind of thing. Mm -hmm. eh, it's kind of fun. Uh, living after midnight, nothing we need to say about that. It's it's living after midnight for crying out loud. Uh, another thing coming, still sounds great live. Another great crowd chant thing, and then uh, that that ends that. Um, that ends the the CD. Uh, yes, that ends the CD. So um, now, with this, after they do, let's see, after Free Will Burning, they go into Victim of Changes. And you can hear pin drops. The crowd is not reacting to the song, which is weird. Um, but then if you watch the video, it makes sense. This video, and when you when you look at this, there this is geared toward the 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 teenage audience and those young twenty somethings that have picked up on the band just recently. And songs like "Victim of Changes" were were for like the longtime old timer fans, like probably like well, we wouldn't have known what "Victim of Changes" was yet at this point. At least I wouldn't have. But anyway, so that that would have been for the old timer fans, and you just. Yeah, the crowd just seemed really quiet for the song. It's great performance, super performance. Um, Green Man Alishi with the two prong crown, you know, a, a pre staple re received a little bit better. And uh, that's it. After that, I uh, just living up to midnight. You, oh, you got another thing. And they end off with Hell Blunt for Leather, which is a bonus track on the, the remastered version. Of course, you also get a bonus track of Screaming for Vengeance and Rock Hard Ride Free. Not from this tour, though. <laughs> Why? Why? Why would you do a different tour for a live for this live album? You pick, yeah, they, you know, pick something they else. Just from... A lot of remasters. Yeah. I was just like, what? I don't. I don't quite get that. But anyway, um, yeah. Is it Unleashed in the East? No, far from it. But it's a very, it's still a strong album. I think I'm with you with the 7.5. I I will give it that. But I'm, one thing I've got to, I got to say, because you've had the chance to see Priest live, and I haven't. I've seen a lot of clips. But when I watched that Fuel for Life show, I could not believe how animated and how active Rob was at that show. He was he just seemed like he was he was full of life in that show. And yes, he found that he it was the newfound sobriety. So I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. But still, I just I'm like, I would just I've seen clips of Rob and he just kind of he just looks like he lumbers around. He doesn't really. And yeah, he's put weight on and he was in a really good he was in good shape in this 
particular tour. So maybe that may have had something to do with it, but still he just, and maybe I'm being unfair by saying he just lumbers around, but do you get what I'm getting at here? Yeah. Um, I saw him in 88 on Ram it down mm -hmm. and he was like how he was on turbo. I mean, in the eighties, he is commanding that stage. He's moving around a lot. Yeah. I mean, he, and his voice was, we'll talk about this ne next week. When he sobered up, his voice was never finer. Yes, and absolutely. I agree. It, it was never finer. And um, that's saying a lot. Like, But yeah, he was a lot more animated when I saw him on Ram It Down than when I saw him on Firepower, for example. And then there were years that I, I didn't see him where he moved around probably even less than firepower. It depended on how his health was. Mm -hmm. But early on, right through the 80s, and maybe even maybe maybe painkiller, he was a force of nature on stage. He was always really animated, really got into it. And, and so and so were KK and Glenn too. Let's oh yeah. Let's they they were very animated on stage. Ian just stood in that one spot and he just banged his head and just, he just he, he's like Cliff Williams. He was Cliff, he was Cliff Williams, but with more energy. Yes. That's not a knock on Cliff Williams. No. And like like Cliff was into it, but he wasn't, you know, I don't think Cliff was hurting his neck like Ian was. Let's go that let's go that way. No. But both great bass players. Um but yeah, in '88, when I saw when I saw Priest, yeah, that that was Rob was very animated and his voice was fantastic. Um, you, you see him now; it's well, he's in his and he's in his seventies now. Oh yeah, yeah, but his his voice is still strong. I mean, I'm not gonna say it was like it was in the '80s. No, it's not. But we're human. Sure. So, but it for '72, it's very very impressive. Um, but yeah, a lot more animated then. Yeah. And, and he was healthier, you know. Oh yeah, like I because I watched a clip of um, something from Painkiller, and I'm trying to remember what what song it was I was watching on Painkiller, and he just he on that particular clip I saw, he looked tired. He he looked he looked he looked like he was he looked he he looked like he just went a few rounds in a boxing ring or something. He just. He just looked tired. I, I think he still sounded good, but something, I don't know. He just, he didn't, he didn't look, he didn't look like he wanted to be there at that particular clip. Okay. Like I said, I can't remember what, what show it was, what, I, what song I was hearing, but he, something just didn't, something didn't, didn't gel on that one for some reason. I don't know why, but, and that's, and I guess, and I guess where I've seen, stuff of him like in the last 15 years or whatever you know i i say he always he always looks down like he's like like he's reading a teleprompter or something he just he's looking down at the at the at the stage a lot more instead of and again please correct me if i'm wrong you know in the comments especially please you know brutalize me for if i'm wrong on this but that's just what i saw in clips he just didn't seem like he was looking out at the audience quite as strong from what I was from what I was seeing again, I could be completely wrong. Maybe it was just random clips I was seeing. So, go, so. yeah, and you know, maybe painkiller. Maybe it was distress of the trials from the year before too. Now oh, that could have been it. Yeah, that could have been too. Mm -hmm. That could have been because I think I think you had said you had said it looked like they they aged quite a bit from uh, from during that whole period. It just seemed like they really it really took a toll on them. But yeah, I think I think Peter Jones may have said maybe that. it was Peter. In one of our, it might have been in one of our earlier episodes. I think he he may have said that, and I would agree with him on that. Yeah, yeah. So, you said something about what you would put in and take out. All right. Okay. Now think about Kiss Alive too. After three live albums, I'm sorry. After Destroyer, Rock and Roll Over, Love Gun, three studio albums. They put five songs from each album on a live tour. That's where I would go with Priest Live, but it would be three songs from the five albums. So if I were to do it, and this would be changing up the tour set to set list too, in some spots, out in the cold opens, 
But then you go into locked in because locked in, they were playing live. Locked in was the first single in video. So that's what you put in. Then you go out, he, go into head and out to the highway. Um, so no metal guns. Okay. We'll get into the point of entry songs in a little bit. Breaking the laws, fine here. Love Bites is fine. Normally, I would take off Love Bites, but I think this performance, especially with Rob, you keep Love Bites in. Now, some heads are going to roll. As it pains me to say this, I would take out because okay. I want to put another song from Screaming on here. So I put Riding on the Wind on. Okay. And I'm thinking between that and Bloodstone, but I'm thinking you want to keep the energy up. So let's put in Riding on the Wind. Sentinel, perfect where it is. Private property, I would have put it in Desert Plains, which was performed on a tour. Yes, I know they play it too fast live, but I would put that in there in that spot. Now, if you're doing the second record, if you're going by the album, the LP, I take Rock You All Around the World out, and for reasons which I went over in the last episode, <laughs> and that's where I put Turbo Lover. Okay. okay? Turbo Lover, you got to keep on. Turbo Lover always goes over well live. Mm -hmm. Always. Electric Eye, keep where it is. And then where Turbo Lover is, I put in Solar Angels. Ooh. Now, I'm trying to think, what else would you put in there at that spot? Um, I, I think just as a nod to the older the older fans who love Solar Angels, and it's slow and it's heavy. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you put Hot Rockin' in there, Turning Circles. I mean, maybe maybe the younger crowd will like the song, like Turning Circles. It's, but And I love it, too. But I would put in Solar Angels. Like, my last five, I think, my last six, I think, are pretty killer. You keep Free Will Burning in, and you take out that parental guidance which i'm not a fan of and you put in <laughs> steeler which closes british steel living after midnight you've got everything coming keep it as it is so here you got all five studio albums represented equally that way you, if you're a new fan and you look at this this track listing you're like a well, point of entry must suck. There's only one song off of this. Screaming for Vengeance must not be that good. There's only two songs off this. No. This way you get a good representation. I understand you're promoting a new album. They did at 1.7 songs off of this album live. And then they took Hot for Love out. Right. And then, but they kept Locked In. in. I would put Locked In on here, no doubt about it, because this is your first single. It's like, Mm. Oh, well, the single didn't do as well. Let's not even put it on the live album, but we'll put in this parental guidance. Mm. So, but that's how I would do it. It's interesting. Parental guidance isn't even on this, on the Kansas City show. That's crazy. I just Maybe noticed, they... I just, I just realized that's like, yeah, that's, that wasn't even on that set. So mm. they obviously added that in later, but, right, uh, okay. you know, I, you know, I'm thinking, I, I know locked in was, was on the video um the the video playlist so i yes yeah so is, there is a there is a difference there but yeah well, that's 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 good stuff right there yeah yeah i i would i would go along with that i i, I would uh, i would i would buy that version <laughs> so okay um and definitely do something better with this album oh, oh i feel like i feel like there's we we got to come up with a good comment here uh this, I mean, uh, what's what's a really bad album cover that's out there that would make this look like uh, like the Mona Lisa or something, uh, or this makes it look like the Mona Lisa? Uh, Predator, easy prey. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yes, yeah, okay, touche. <laughs> if you, for those who know, if you know, you know. I'll, I'll just go with that. Watch my Metal Blade show. That'll that'll be that. That's all you need to know. Uh, all right. Well, there you go, folks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had to throw that. I had to throw that in there. You, you commented maybe, on that a few times. Oh, maybe, 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 um, maybe the the version of Jugulator we got. Uh, oh yeah. Or how about uh, Born Again, Black Sabbath? I'm ooh, sorry, that cover. Oof, no. Yeah, that one's pretty rough too. But uh, good album. Uh, boo. I mean. I mean, the the version of Jugulator we get it was that that scrunched up, 
you know, you could tell it's pixelated, but they, they get the beast thing. But then you look at the, the actual piece that they did and I'm like, holy crap, that's amazing. Why did they zoom in so much on just that face? Oh, that was awful. But anyway, uh, jugulators for another couple of weeks. So we don't have to worry about getting into that just yet, but, um, all right, folks, tell us, Tell us what you think about this album. What what were your what were your real life uh, real time thoughts on this? Um, you know, what do you think of it now? Uh, how is it? How has it aged well for you? Stuff like that. You know what to do in the comments. Um, as far as all of the things you 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 know, if you're following Tim's Vinyl Confessions, you're seeing John doing the Y and T series. Uh, how many more how many more episodes you got left of that? I've, well, I've, we, already, well, we, already, we already we already recorded them all um right i'm just five okay i couldn't yeah, remember five the next I couldn't remember how far up in... yeah the next album's 10 okay so we did four studio albums and we also did the unearth okay. volumes one and two as well as in one episode okay all right um there's been uh a numerous other little uh shows like on grand Rock warehouse and um rock daydream nation uh bicycle legs you're gonna see me on bicycle legs hopefully in just another week or so um so there's there's a little bits of here and there uh you know ladano has got got us on his entrance thing so you know uh, give ladano some love as well so you know there's a lot of folks out there just to give give some love to uh next week we bring the professor back because we're going to ram it down and we're going to, you know, it's just, this is going to be fun. I, I cannot wait to hear the professor, Peter Jones, give his, his thoughts on, on his, on this, this lovely little album. So John, unless you've got something else we need to be plugging that I, that I completely missed. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> then that's, then we go. So for my good, for my co-captain, John, the music nut, John Clouser, Johnny metal, the metal dad, Coming to you from our mu- my music corner of the world. Rock, rock, rock forever. We'll see you next week when we ram it down. Take care, everybody.